Hi there everyone and welcome back to another Drummer Artist for Studios. As always, I'm Alex. Today, we're going to make a pin back for you to rivet on to a piece you might be working on. So though it might not be a common thing for you to work on, most jewelers or hobbyists at some point will have to make a pin, or technical term for it being a fibula some form of a art piece or brooch that is attached to a garment. Um, most people will probably just do the simple thing of go out and purchase prefabricated pinbacks for them to attach on their pieces. I know I did for the longest time. But it's a good idea for you to know how to make them yourself, and that's what we're going to be working on today. Most people will go ahead and fabricate parts to go onto a pin back using tubing and small discs that they'll cut out of metal to create a hook and they'll solder the pieces onto the back of whatever they're working on but you may not have the equipment to be able to solder with you might be in an apartment where you can't use torches or you might not even know how to solder so how are you going to attach a pin back to something so that you can actually wear it or a customer could wear it that is where this is coming in. In the description for this video, you'll find one of my handouts, and on it there are four different templates that you can use to create a pin back that you either can cut it directly out of the back of what you're working on if you're doing layers of metal, or you can rivet it onto your piece so that there is no heat required, no soldering, and no torches. So, in order to accomplish that, I'm doing it out of 18 gauge copper, because that's primarily what I use. It's easy to get a hold of. And you're pretty much just going to need your saw frame, a drill bit, and pliers. The only other crucial thing that you will need for the pin backs that you'll have to go out and find is going to be what is commonly referred to as music wire. It's a very thin wire that is a high carbon tool steel. So it is very flexible and will bounce right back to its original shape. My pieces of it, I buy at a local jewelry supply place, but I have included an Amazon link in the description for you to be able to purchase it online and get it shipped directly to you. You generally want to use this stuff because of its spring quality you can manage to create spring-loaded pinbacks that will keep their tension in so you don't have to have any form of an actual closing lock to hold the pin in place. But once you have your copper and your music wire, so let's see how these templates are used. So to begin, I've taken my four sample pieces and I have glued them all onto my 18 gauge copper. The basic steps I'm gonna use here are pretty straightforward. I'm going to use my center punch to punch and drill a series of holes that I will use for cutting some of these sections out. On these two specifically, I have to cut interior lines. So I will be punching a hole at the one of the corners of each of these sections to be able to cut the pieces out. I'm also on a few of these going to punch and drill holes so that my pin that will actually create the needle that will go through the fabric can slide through those and create the pivot point. When looking at these templates, some of them will have dashed lines instead of solid lines. Those dashes indicate where the metal needs to be folded. So anywhere it's a dashed line, you do not want to cut that. That's going to be a very crucial thing. You cut through that, these will not function properly. The holes are all drilled. I'm ready to start cutting the pieces out. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that on these two, I did not drill all the holes because these four are simply there to give you a rough idea on a good spot to be able to rivet this to something. Because remember, the whole point of these pinbacks 
are you can assemble and attach them without using solder and heat whatsoever. So I'll cut everything out and then I'll show you how each of these is folded to be able to turn it into the pin backing. There we have our four pieces all cut out, ready to go. So now I'm going to show you how to bend these up to make them work properly. I'll start with this one, kind of is the, the cross shape here. You only have to do three bends on that, this one. You're gonna build the two ends here up and then you're gonna bend the hook on the end up. I'm using a pair of flat nosed jeweler's pliers and I'm using it as a break so I'm putting the end of the pliers right where I want it to bend. You also want to Holding be careful with this stuff and then forcing the metal over. You don't necessarily want to use a tiny, and tiny that will give pair me as of clean of a bend as possible. Because the jaws might not be strong enough. You may have this, to resort to pushing up against steel. something. You may have to resort to using a secondary pair of pliers. Can have a tendency of putting a but little nick that is essentially all your you wire do. snips. So I'm now going to come in here and do the and same thing. You might have seen it when I did it where there. I want it to bend. If you're going to use wire snips to cut it, you're going to want to do it close to and the just bend opening of the jaw because you're going to have the most resilience and the most force and now going what into that, that has done if you try doing it up created the tip, you'll have less here, force and that's when you tend to and put a hook nicks here into this the other t-shaped one is going to be almost the exact same thing the ends are pretty much the same just grab them and bend them So the other end, since it doesn't have that hook, start by taking your flat nose pliers, bending it up at that 90 degrees, so it sticks up like that. You are then going to take your round nose pliers, and again I'm getting it down at the bottom of the jaw so that I have the largest diameter on this set of pliers and I'm starting by rounding that over and that is going to create my hook and I'll use another my other pair of pliers to help hold this and now that has created the hook that I will use to grab the wire so those two are both bar style pin backs that will work very easily the other two plate styles are, again are fairly easy and the only real difference is you have to figure out how to push the plates up so I'm going to attempt to do this from the back side and I just got them going a little bit there and now I may be able to come back in here and grab them. You might have to push them out a little bit more. There we go. Bend those two out and this will create your pivot point. And now these two, you are bending both of them out again, and you're going to do it like the second bar pin back, where you bend them out, and then you'll use your round pliers to bend them into a curve.
They don't have to be as far curved over as the other one. And it might take some finagling to get it to exactly where you want it. But now that has that nice little hook in it there. This one will again work very similarly. The difference is you only have one spot that your pin back is attached or your, uh, your pin wire is attached to. So what you would actually do is these two get curved down. Those are your hooks. So this one, you roll back in on itself towards the outside so that your pin back doesn't come off. They all work fairly similarly. It just depends what your application is going to be for. So we now have the pivot points created on all of these. The hooks are all made on them. We're going to come back in and actually put all of our pin backings on the actual pin portion. For that, I'm using my music wire. And uh, I usually start, I leave it as the nice full length. And I will put it into the side with the actual pivot on it. From there, I will make my first bend. To get it started. And now it's hooked in place and it's not going anywhere. Now. An issue with this one might be that it can freely swing, so I have to bend this over far enough to actually allow it to catch on like that, and that is what is going to create my spring tension. So now I can use the other side as my pliers, essentially, just bend it right on the piece as much as I can. And now I can simply go ahead and get it hooked on there. And that way I know exactly how much I have to use, which will allow me to preserve as much as this as I can. Get it snipped off. That pin is now set to go. All I have to do is flip it back around a little bit. And then I have to come in with a file and start to shape this needle. So you just keep doing that until you get it to the point that you want it to be. But that hooks over and that pin is now ready to go. Now you will of course have to be careful if you are using a pickle solution to clean your metal. You have to be sure that this comes off or you don't put it on until the very end because it is steel so if it goes in the pickle it will cause a lot of issues and start copper plating all your pieces. But that was the first one. The second one here, the other T-bar is going to be 
fairly similar to how it goes on. It's actually pretty much going to be exactly the same. I'll put it through, make that first bend, and over exaggerate the bend so that it hooks. This truly is a trial and error system here. Make my second bend to allow it to pivot. And snip it right off. So again, very similar. Really the only thing that changed is that style of the hook. The ones that are going to be a little bit more interesting are the flat backs. So this one I'm going to start, I have it hooked into the top, and I'm kind of putting my thumb where that is, so I know that is how much I need to have in it. So I will make my first bend right like that. That will now get threaded through my pivots. Second bend. And this one, what I'm going to do is actually keep the pin backs themselves not quite perfectly straight and parallel with each other. Because I'm going to use that little flared amount there to act as the tension to hold it in place. You can come in and create little V's and shapes in it there to hold it together, but this will be enough. That tension will keep them from coming out just like that. Now this also illustrates a thing that you have to be careful on with the pins is you have to be sure this distance is long enough to allow you to get your garment pinned in here. So I wouldn't want it much shorter than this. The last one is pretty much going to be the same process. This one though is slightly different yet again in that it has a single thinner point that it's going to pivot around. So this one, I actually have it being tensioned towards the inside, opposed to being on the outside, so that I actually have to pull them apart, and it's the tension squeezing in that holds it together. Now you can see that's pretty flat there, and what you can do is with it off, you can come in here and put a little bit of a curve into it. So now when you get it in there, it's raised off the surface slightly so you can still get garments in it. Each of these work but each of them have slight variations you have to play with depending on what your design is. So there you have it. We used some 18 gauge copper and 
a few inches of a music wire, high tension steel wire, to create four distinct but similar pin backings for you to be able to attach onto something that you might be making. Hopefully you were able to follow along with this. And remember that these designs are not all you're limited to. You can manage to adapt these and modify them to fit whatever you are looking at doing. And you can even have it designed so that you can have these pieces cut out and protruding from the back of your piece without the need of attaching these parts to anything. So play with it. Figure out how it works for whatever you are doing. If you have any suggestions for other videos you would like to see me do, feel free to leave a comment down in the description for this. I'm always open to see what you guys want to see me do. Thanks for watching. This has been Alex with Drum Artisifer Studios. See you next time. That wasn't expected.